you want to resign. They say you've got a three-month notice period versus a month that legislation says. Now you're reading this for the first yes, time. Yes, and you first of all, you don't know. You you resign. You send a re, you find you give your manager a resignation letter, and I'm resigning. And you know I'm I'm gonna save my notice. You know all that prepared speech that we do, <laughs> and then when you get there and you say yes, I'll save my notice uh, for my one month calendar notice, and your manager says calendar month. No 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 no. Mm. You've got three month notice. You know. You are a senior manager. And at that time, you've agreed to be joining another company in a month. You've agreed to join another company <laughs> in a month. By suspension, I'm your employee. So I still need to get my full salary and my full benefits. Life continues when you finalize your investigation and take me into a hearing. And then I'm dismissed. Then you can stop my salary from the day that you are dismissing me. It looks like... Um a paid holiday. You no, know, it's frustrating because you don't know. You're dealing with uncertainty. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. You're waking up every morning. You're not going anywhere. Yo. You're not going to work. And sometimes, remember, when they suspend you, they can take your laptop and they can take your company cell phone. Take a company car if you use a company car. If your company car. car. Yes. You know, how are we going to manage it? What kind of a, what kind of leave is this going to be? Is it going to be I for... How do I prove that? Does this oh. fall under special leave? Does it fall under sick leave? And does this mean that every time that you go on your periods, you what kind of evidence do you give? Oh. Or do we provide that based on your cycle? Is your cycle then maybe also incorporated? Oh. In, you know, so there's a whole lot that... Cycles change as well. Cycle do we changes. Monitor? Do, we mo- do we have a, a cycle manager? You know, <laughs> wow. <laughs> King King David Studio podcast. I have in the studio it's second time around Bonnie a dancer uh, who is HR specialist. Uh, I wonder what does she really do? You know, maybe I should ask. <laughs> we'll get to that. Dancer. Yes. Yes, I'm a Baxter. Baxter. <laughs> we all asked right where the hell does he really you know people right? say I was talking on the radio the other day about um, it's none of your business I said what is none of your business in in, in your life mm-hmm. and people said when they asked with you why the Baxter's best best as hair is like that it's Kelly it's none of your business none of so, your business so I hope you won't say it's none of my business where does the Dunster surname come from it's from my grandfather's side my grandfather was Kosa from okay. the Eastern Cape. You know, there's a lot of Kosa people with these mm. surnames, you know. So my grandfather was there from Transkei. Okay. And yeah, that's how I got it. It's my biological surname. It's yes. my bloodline. You're not the only one that carries it. No, there's a lot uh, <laughs> that carries it. I've got, we've got family all over. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we generally, we, 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 we come from trans guy from yeah. the Eastern Cape or rather my grandfather comes from there. Exactly. We were born this side. So we've got family all over the country. So you still have clear roots in the Eastern Cape? No, I don't anymore Uh-oh. since my both my grandfather and my dad are no more. So I, yeah. It, it disconnected. We disconnected. But at least I know who I am. And it's close. You're Ted. And they're Ted, huh? I hope I is. Uh-uh. I just close as a Uh-uh. She <laughs> <laughs> makes in a suit. You know, plus my mom is so too. So, yes. yeah. Wow. But anywho. It's good to have you again. Thank you. What, 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 what occupies most of your time as an HR specialist? As an independent consultant, it's actually hearing people's stories <laughs> more than anything else. Remember what I called you. <laughs> Sango. <laughs> Same thing as I'm them 17. <laughs> say the exact words that you used previously. I forgot. What did I say? A traditional healer, a traditional traditional healer, healer of, of, of employer, of employees. <laughs> you know, I think I spend most of my time um, listening to people's stories around yeah. how they've been unfairly treated or how they can navigate the world of work better, mm. uh, how they can negotiate for salaries, how can they can negotiate for offers. If not, I think that occupies like around about 60% of my time or so. Then the rest is really around, um, you know, facilitating training and doing mm. public speaking events but really it's around how can I you know navigate yeah. this monster do you consult for us as individuals or you sure. consult for corporates for companies that are my my client base is mainly individual people okay right and then I do have uh small medium enterprises that I actually have on retainer yeah. that I consult for their small businesses okay yeah do you, is it fulfilling it is fulfilling. Uh, it is fulfilling. But what is more fulfilling for me, it's the individual side mm. because then you know you can actually make an impact to a person, That's right? True. Um, and because you don't work for the same company or you don't have any affiliation, you know, so you can be as brutally honest as you possibly can be. Yeah, or, you or can, whatever side. Whatever side. <laughs> and I think having to 
help somebody and say thank you for that piece of advice thank you for actually telling me this i didn't know and either i won the ccma case or i won the ah. appeal or you know what my my employer has actually stopped with the you know poor performance improvement because they realized that we didn't have a contract they didn't train me and all of those things so having to make an impact on individual lives for me carries more meaning and purpose yeah. over everything else. Do people, can people pay you? Because this is not a service. And I ask this very innocently. Yes, yeah, they pay this me. This is a, a service that we don't know exists, if right? you understand what no, I No, mean. they pay me. <laughs> it's my time. It's, no, no, no. They, <laughs> yeah. no do, 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 I guess in essence, what I'm asking, <laughs> I get my child. Yeah, of I'm course. I'm asking if, if it's a, it's a, I know we need food. Sure, sure. You know, but I don't know we need you. All right. As okay. individuals. You're as, not going to know you need me up yeah. until Popo hits the fan. Ah, when there's right? trouble. When it's all good, you know, and it's rosy, ah, you don't need me. When, right? when you and the employer are getting along, ah, they're promoting yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And, or maybe you, you know, they're not giving, yeah, they're not giving you that promotion or they, yeah, they have overlooked you or maybe you're going through a retrenchment, but then sometimes on the good side, it's for your own personal development. That's and you say, true. you know what, I need coaching services, you know, mm. for my advancement, I need to move from point A to point B in the next 18 months. So that is oh. at that, but people generally wouldn't know up until maybe they come across, uh, you know, somebody talking about like you this. like this and yeah. say, ah, ah, man, let me call her and find out if she can help me with this. So that's how people actually have. So most of the time they would consult because there's something that's happening or something that's brewing uh, and they actually want to get um, my piece of advice. Do, do you deal with more problems than the good developmental issues? True. I deal with more issues. Uh, problems. More problem issues, you know. I've been unfairly treated. I've been unfairly dismissed. I have been overlooked. Um... You know, my manager is, you know, bullying me or I work in a toxic work environment. Sexual harassment. Sexual harassment, you know, yeah, which is the worst. So it's half of the time it's those issues. And not that these people don't have HR where they are working, mm. but sometimes say, you know what, I just need an independent view. Yeah. Um, I just need somebody that's far removed. Um, I don't think I can trust the environment that I'm in. Mm. So can you just give it to me and, you know, I'll take it from there. So, yeah, it's under those circumstances. Let's start already there with I can't trust my environment. Sure. HR by its nature is supposed to be looking at the interests mm -hmm. of the employees. Correct me. Let me carry on with no, my continue. narrative. Let continue. me carry on with my narrative. I didn't think we were going to get there, but continue. It's supposed <laughs> to be <laughs> looking after the well-being sure. of the employees. Mm -hmm. And employees is not just the workers' factory level. It sure. includes... Management. Of course. Yes. It's not just Bali. It's mm. not them against us. Of course. It's everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a dispute with my company mm -hmm. and you are called upon to be a part of the solution mm -hmm. of settling this problem. And I think I'm right. As an employee. As an employee. Mm -hmm. They think they're right as my bosses. Mm -hmm. And you are, you represent, you're supposed to represent technically both of us. Mm -hmm. Because you are the one who should be fair. Of course. In your assessment, mm -hmm. not necessarily your judgment, mm -hmm. your assessment. Mm -hmm. And, but why is it that more often than not, I get the feeling that you represent the company mm -hmm. and you can't help yourself because they pay your salary. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Right. Um, so HR by its nature, obviously if you're an, if you're in HR, you're also an employee. Can we, 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 let's we, take we that. bank that? That's what I, that's what I yeah, said. Let's, let's, they're, yeah. they're paying your salary. Right, let's bank that. And yeah. then number two, as an HR professional, you need to be an advocate for people, right? Okay. And that includes, that's employees, management and everybody. You need to advocate for the wellness and the fairness of, uh, you know, uh, good practices in the, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. That's one part of it, right? Maybe this is me advocating for you, how they should treat you better because I'm actually the custodian of those policies and processes yeah. and I understand them better than you do. True. And I also understand them better than maybe the line manager does, yes. right? So I can actually unpack what they mean because maybe none of you actually understand them well. Mm -hmm. So that's my role. Uh, on the other hand, when it comes to the organization itself or to the leadership or to the management or to the decision makers, you know, I play an advisory role. Yeah. And I 
guide, I advise, and I make recommendations okay. in terms to say, this is how you need to deal with the David issue. Mm -hmm. This is me coming in there, right? And, you know, based on this policy and process and what David has done and how you have done, you have managed uh, David, mm. this needs what to happen. However, after making those recommendations and advisors, I don't take the decision as an HR professional. Mm. And I think this is one thing that people often miss. Yeah. They assume as HR, we make those decisions. After I've made those recommendations, as the leader of the organization or the head or whatever, you need to make a call to say, this is how I'm going to deal with David mm -hmm. based on what Boniwe has advised me as the HR yeah. specialist, yeah. right? And sometimes, and not always, sometimes managers can say, no, I hear you, ne? but but I'm telling you that, no. <laughs> yes. I hear you and I get what you're trying to do and I see you're trying to mitigate the risk of whatever. Guess what? No, this is what I'm going to do, mm. right? And, 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 then, and you seeing that this is the wrong direction. Yeah, this is the wrong direction. Do you also see the unfairness possibly? The unfairness. Unfairness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Towards, yeah. towards the yeah. employee. And I will say, this is actually an unfair labor practice. Yeah. Oh, you want to dismiss David for whatever? This is actually going to be an unfair dismissal because you didn't follow process. Yeah. So no, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And someone feels, you know what? I've had enough of David. Whether fair or not, I'm getting rid of David, right? We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll deal yeah. with it whichever way. Uh, someone will not understand that as HR, I didn't make that decision. A line manager or a business leader took that decision. Mm. But half of the time, we find leaders that actually hide their decisions behind HR policies and processes. Of course. Right? So, no, 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 no. HR said, no. HR might have advised, but who takes the decision? Who is accountable? Yeah. Right? And if you go against my recommendations and my advice, that's your decision because actually you are responsible for the business unit or, you know, Ultimately. the organization. Yeah. I can actually say, these are my recommendations. Sometimes you even put them in black and white. I recommend one, two, three, four, five. If you decide to go this, I do not agree based on whatever. Mm -hmm. Please expect maybe a CCMA case or whatever to the bargaining council and all of those. But when such things happen, you as David, you're going to say, HR was part of it. Yeah, and I saw her talking to to business, <laughs> they and they were, they were had a meeting, and the same way that I will have a meeting with you, yes. right? Uh, but let me tell you what happens with David as mm. well. When maybe David is not in the wrong, mm. you know, is mm. not in the wrong, and I am able to say to the manager, "You can't do one, two, three, four, five, and the manager hears me. You know, you're gonna be happy. You're gonna think that HR he yeah, helped me, helped you, right? Yeah. Um, and you know what? Or sometimes maybe there's a dispute between you and your manager, and you are able to resolve it the two of you without directly maybe mm -hmm. in, like including me. Sometimes you might think I even have the best boss ever, forgetting that the best boss came to me for, for recommendation. For recommendation. Yeah. It's like if maybe you are looking for an increase or you're looking for a bursary and your manager says, no, HR says oh. there's no budget. So who doesn't <laughs> want to give you an increase it's, or a bursary? It's, it's HR. Oh, no, yeah, it's, well, got, in, no, that, no. in that conversation. Yeah, in that conversation. But with you, you're going to say it's HR, right? Yeah. And because the manager said what? HR, HR says, says there's no budget. Yeah. There's no mind. Bearing in mind, HR doesn't work in finance. No. <laughs> but now, now, if it happens after whatever time, then there's provisions made uh, and your manager gives you an ad hoc increase or an out of cycle increase or a bursary, yeah. you know, you're going to be so happy that your manager gave that and your manager is going to own it. I have actually made a decision and here's a letter. It's not, not like HR. It's not like HR gave you. <laughs> HR doesn't have the powers most to give you money. I have as the manager. Yeah. But when they couldn't, you know, so there's those dynamics that people really don't understand about the role. So we are, you know, advocates for, for people generally in yeah. the in, in the organization uh, and employees, you know, we aim to try to influence the work environment that people work in. Mm. You know, we advocate for fair labor practices. We advocate for, you know, for a safe, uh, you know, uh, work environment, yeah. you know. But obviously, we are also met with challenges. We also report to people that make decisions. Uh, we are 
in in us actually being employed we also take instructions mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. and in taking instructions it doesn't mean that you execute an instruction because you also agree with it so there are those dynamics that people really do not understand ultimately we don't make those decisions but we enable and influence those, you know those decisions those decisions yeah. and also advocate and influence for those uh, you know harmonious and fair you know work environment so mm-hmm. i think people don't really understand that but it's just that people find it easier to blame us when Popper hits the fan. So it's a so that you deal with a lot of misconceptions as, yeah. as you've indicated. Yes. Yeah. Because because yeah. I've blamed HR in my past. Uh, it was um, it was a sales division, mm-hmm. and there's there's something that I wanted to happen, and mm-hmm. it didn't with regards to some of the guys who were working un- under me, mm. and it just didn't happen. And I thought it was an HR issue. No. And I guess this clarified sure. that. Yeah. I guess it's unless you yeah. recommend. Even wrong, with, which even, is also possible. Probably you're could also, be, you're it also could be human. possible. It could be possible. Yes, to know? say I. No, you know, whatever. And yeah. maybe someone doesn't also probe and understand and ask for reasons and unpack, right? Uh, but it's the same as having to hire someone. Mm. Previously or, or decades ago, whenever, people will say, when they think HR, you know, they hire and fire. Essentially. Guess what? I don't hire people. And I you don't sit, even fire. And I don't even fire people. I sit in an interview. I help you to interview. I facilitate the process. Yeah. I actually give you my recommendations and I'll tell you based on experience, based on skills, based on culture and suitability. This might be, but this might not be. And here with my recommendations, you go back and actually make that decision. If you get dismissed, you are dismissed by your line manager or the organization, but not me. Yeah. And even if we go to the CCMA, I go there on the mandate of the organization to say, you go there and fight that because we didn't do anything wrong. You will actually arbitrate that matter, mm-hmm. right? Or sometimes the organization realize that they've made a mistake. They say, okay, you know Let's what? Settle. Object to the con up, just do the conciliation mm-hmm. and actually settle. And they give me a mandate to settle for three months or for six months. That's it. That's you get it. a mandate. <laughs> Tell you what, I do not have a mandate as HR to say I'm going to go there and settle. Yeah. With what money? <laughs> With what budget? Yeah. I don't. You need to give me a mandate because that money is going to come from your cost center. It's going to come from your budget. It's the person in your department. It was you who dismissed or it was your line manager that dismissed that person. So I get a mandate when I go to the CCMA. You described the role so well and I call it the agreement. Sure. I call it the agreement between an employee and an employer. Sure. Your job is to ensure it mm-hmm. that it's 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 retained. The sure. agreement, some written, some not. Mm-hmm. Written ones are in the contract. Sure. What time you come in, what time you leave, or your leave your you leave your hours of work, lunch, and all of that. Mm-hmm. And there are some tricky ones that are not quite clear. Mm-hmm. Ensuring a, a safe working environment. Mm-hmm. It may not be there in my specific contract. Mm-hmm. You're thinking, should mm-hmm. it be there? I saw you thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Should it be there? Even if it's just a line that we as no. Mashabella creatives ensure that your working environment will be safe. I, I can't think on top of my head right now yeah. where I have seen an employment contract that had that sentence, yeah. right? But by virtue of our constitution as South Africa uh-huh. and by virtue of our legislation that stems from the constitution, mm. Everybody has the right to fair labor practices. Mm. That's number one. And employers are responsible for providing a safe working environment for employees. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't include it in your contract, by virtue of that- It's protected somewhere else. It's protected somewhere. When you don't make mention of it, it's okay. But the LRA or the basic conditions of employment Mm. or the Health and Safety Act, all of those things, you know, your employment contract cannot supersede those. Let's put it it. like that. It cannot supersede those. So like I haven't had a contract that will stipulate that, but it is what is expected based on the constitution, based on our legislation, based even on the International Labor Organization. Yeah. Yeah. How far does does a safe working environment extend? Because sometimes Mm -hmm. the safety is not the machines. Sure. It's fellow humans. Yeah. Which actually more often than not, it's the fellow humans. It's mm-hmm. the it's the possible harassment and mm-hmm. so forth and so forth. Mm. So how far does it extend this protection? It goes far, right? Yeah. It goes. It, for example, um, last year our Minister of Employment and Labour, you know, uh, signed into effect the Code of Good Practice on the Prevention and the Elimination of Harassment, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in the workplace, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it was so extensive that we have like we have never seen before 
right? So you can't discriminate against me. You can't bully me. Mm. Whether it's psychologically, emotion, maybe because of my race, because of my gender, because of everything else, right? We talk to elements of sexual harassment as well. It goes to that. It goes to the environment that you're working in. It like the hazard such as like the table, the chairs that you mm. sit, that the you know, cables. that you sit in the cables that yes. you that the yeah. cables that you have. You yeah, know, might trip and fall. Yes, yes, you know. For example, you work in a building that has stairs, right? Do do you have handrails? You know, mm. so it's so you know it's it's so broad you know for example that's why even when you get injured at work you know we talk about you know um you know injury on duty mm -hmm. we talk about you know coida we talk about what how is coida? You, coida is sure that's a tricky question not tricky in the sense of tricky yeah. coida is the is a compensation of injury okay Something we'll get it. We'll get. Yes. I'll find it. We'll right. Write it. We'll, we'll strap it. Please, they will do that, <laughs> yes. right? But actually, Coida actually talks to uh, some kind of compensation that one is eligible when they're actually injured on on, on duty, duty that yeah. you can actually then claim, uh, right? Uh. But obviously, there's a process that needs to be followed around that, completing the paperwork and submitting them on time mm. and all of those things. Then we come back to such things as bullying and such as sexual harassment, you know, which also should not be happening mm. because obviously it says something to your to your right to dignity as a as a person mm. and that's why the 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 code of good practice that i was referring to was actually talking around you know the protection of such things mm -hmm. so i need to go into a work environment and know that i am safe mm. right i am safe from any form of harassment i am safe from any form of bullying i am safe from any form of harm you mm. know and you actually have um, that right as an employee, you know, by virtue of, like I said, the constitution and the and the legislation. Yeah. You might actually not say it as the employer. You might not actually have a, a poster on your wall, mm. which by law you should have, but it doesn't exonerate you from those responsibilities. I'm sitting here thinking about some of the rights that I have that are basic, but yet not spoken about also that right to a toilet. Right. A right to <laughs> to water in this building you know and all of that mm. once in a while there would be issues that i noticed this where, where i where I, I i freelance sabc whenever there's no water which happens because mm -hmm. of all sorts of challenges in the city mm -hmm. they would immediately provide also many many toilets outside in the parking sure, sure. so it's it's as basic as that it's as basic as that and that's why you find in certain instances when there's no water you i've seen this especially in public sector or yeah. whatever They'll send people home. True. Right. What are you going to do? How will, you know, yeah. you need running water for the toilet, you yeah. know, you, re, you whatever. So it's those basic things that one needs to actually provide for their, for their, for their employees. For example, if maybe there are no lights, mm. right. And maybe let's assume your work environment doesn't have a generator or backup power in anything mm. else. You can't keep people there. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a study that was done years ago, the Hawthorne Effect, mm -hmm. that talks about the, the environment that you work in. And it actually talks to that environment versus light. You know, how productive people are when there's light versus when there's no light. Oh, okay. You know, it actually impacts your, your concentration, you, your, your performance and all of those. Mm -hmm. And they did a study with people that were working in a dark environment or, you know, fairly, you know, dark. And those that have light to see in terms of how production would come. It's, a, it's an old psychological um, mm. theory that was in, investigated 100 years ago. So it's, it's, as, it's as simple and as basic as that. as that. You might not, people think that, no, I don't have to. No, you have to. Do we, with all this, this knowledge of, of, our, of our legislature and all of that, mm -hmm. with the democratic nature of our country, we mm -hmm. know when it comes to our rights, they are pretty clear. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of misunderstanding. Sure. Do we still find, and I know it's, the answer is yes, do we still <laughs> find a lot of them being completely violated even by big corporates? They do. Big, they do. big, giant why brand do, names. Why do you have the CCMA so busy? <laughs> so like, why is, why is the C, why is the, CCMA is so busy. Why is the bargaining unit so busy? Why is the labor court, court so, so busy? busy? Why are cases sitting at the labor court and they, 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 there's a backlog, you know? So they do. And there could be too many reasons, but one of them, it's, it's, it could be lack of understanding mm. of the of the rules themselves and assuming by virtue of you being an employ an employer or a manager that you, that you understand, but it's not your 
your area of specialty. Of expertise. Yeah. But believe you me, everybody thinks they are an expert in labor law. Everybody thinks they are an expert in HR. And we actually <laughs> allow them to be, right? Up until they, they, they call us and say, please help us navigate this particular complex issue, mm. yeah, right? So it's also the lack of education yeah. and the lack of understanding and interest, uh, you know, and also curiosity around it. Oftentimes what happens... And I want to shift the conversation more to uh, on the employee side. Okay. You get your employment contract. You've been out of work. Mm. You are so happy. You see your name. You see permanent you see employment. The, you, you see, see salary, salary. You see start date, medical aid, pension fund. You sign. You sign. Yeah. Right. Initial every page, send back you starting. Right. You realize whenever you want to resign, they say you've got a three month notice period versus a month that legislation says now you're reading this for the first yes, time yes and you first of all you don't know you you resign you send a re, you find you give your manager a resignation letter and i'm resigning and you know i'm, I'm gonna save my notice you know all that prepared speech that we do <laughs> and then when you get there and you say yes i'll save my notice uh for my one month calendar notice and your manager says calendar month no, 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 no. Mm. You've got three month notice, you know. You're a senior manager. And at that time you've agreed to be joining another company in a month. You've agreed to join another company <laughs> in a month. And then there's that. Or alternatively, maybe your notice period is a month, mm. but you get to a contract and you only you only to find that there's um a restraint of trade, which says that yo, yo. which says that no, no, you cannot work for direct competitors. For a period of six months, mm. or you cannot work within this particular geography for a period of six months. So if you resign for six months, mm. you cannot work for employer A, B, C, D, or customer A, B, C, D. And you find that they even listed them. A did they in a contract because contract <laughs> is twenty five pages. Yeah, who's gonna read twenty five pages? Hey, Who do makes you know, time? Do you know something interesting? I read a contract, somebody's contract, sure. a few months ago, mm -hmm. and for that very reason, yeah, they they said, look, I've just gotten a new job. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Just go through it sure. and see if you pick anything up. Mm -hmm. I said I'm not an expert in this world, in mm -hmm. this, in this, in this line of yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But something that stands out, I'll highlight. Definitely. And there were one or two things that yes. you had. Yeah. So there is that, and because we don't, read, you look for name, start date, salary, benefits, and then you are, yeah. and then you, and then you are done. But then it also goes back to say you need to take interest, you know, and educate yourself. Go through your contract, mm. and some of the words that are used there, they, they would be jargon. Or there would be like language that you really can't understand. True. Get somebody to read it for you to get comfortable, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, sometimes you find that there are employers who do not really have a proper onboarding process, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. induction. Others would call it onboarding. Yes. Others would call it induction. Where you actually take people through the policies, the processes, mm -hmm. where to find them, what it really means for you. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't do that thoroughly. To even talk about, uh, you know, this whole um, harassment and workplace bullying, which actually the Code of God practice actually says you need to actually socialize your employees Whoa. on that upon induction, yeah. right? So people don't do that. And you find that the business itself sometimes relies on HR, you know, to know these things. And they don't take time themselves mm. to understand. And when you make an emotional decision, you're making a decision at a point in time without having consulted the right people. And then you've actually made a wrong decision. And that's why we find ourselves in the CCMA and then so, and so, so forth. So both sides are at fault. Both sides. I yeah. don't want to fault the employer or whatever so it's both sides you you complain about something that you signed to yeah and you were not even aware and guess what the employer will do <laughs> they will pull a contract and highlight and highlight like insurance yes, companies yes. they pull your recording mm -hmm. <laughs> the day that you took the the, the cover <laughs> the, the policy exactly. right and then oftentimes when you're going to the ccma as you prepare whether you are representing the employer or whatever as you prepare one of the documents that you ask for before anything else, the employment contract. You want to see. You want to see the employment contract. What did you sign? What did you sign for? Jeez. What did you agree for? And then at that point in time, somebody assumes to say, ah, shucks. I did say. I actually agreed. I signed to the I three signed. months. I signed to the three months. And somebody actually called me uh, last month and said, you know, I realized that I don't like the environment or whatever. And I actually have a three month notice period. Can I negotiate with my employer to reduce it? I'm like, you've already signed. You're already in it. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> also if you want to go negotiate for it, which I don't think it will make a difference, you're actually telling your employer that I want to leave soon. 
than later. But why are you concerned about the three months? Mm. And you're not even there three months. There's something you highlighted earlier. Labor court, CCMA, and something else. Bargaining council. Bargaining council. Mm. Help us with the differences. So the CCMA and the bargaining council, they are the same. Okay. And they operate at the same level. Okay. right? So the CCMA is the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation, mm -hmm. and Arbitration. Yeah. And then the bargaining council um, serves the same purpose. The mandate is the same. However, with the bargaining council, you'll find that each industry has a bargaining council for the of industry. Maybe yes. it's, you know, the medical, uh, the sector, medical transport, doctors, transportation, okay, retailers, you. and all of those things. So there is that. But mm. the purpose there, it's the same. Mm. Right. And if you working in a particular sector, maybe, or you go to the CCMA, you'd often find the commissioner said, we can't hear this here, but you need to go to the bargaining council because the bargaining council for that specific sector does exist, okay. you know, but they are actually equal and they are there. They are the same. Mm. So if you have a matter that would have said either at the CCMA or at the bargaining council, and you are not happy with the outcome, uh, you know, whether as, a, whether as an employer or as an employee, mm. and you feel maybe somebody could actually reach a different uh, outcome, then you take the matter for review okay. to the labor court, ah. right? So the labor court is obviously a higher, mm. it's, a, it's, it's, it's a higher level than these, but they are actually a court of law, right? Yes. Whilst here with the CCMA and the bargaining council, same as in an employment environment, when you're listening at matters, you're listening at matters from um, a balance of probability okay. in terms of the facts okay. and whatever, yeah. you know, which story sounds more probable, sounds more true, but obviously based on the evidence and the incidents that might have happened. Yeah. But now you go to the labor court. We know when we talk about the labor court, sometimes we talk about, you know, a plaintiff, you know, yeah, someone is then, wrong, someone is accused, you know, and proving beyond reasonable doubt and stuff like, like that. that. But because also it's a labor matter, there will be some kind of leniency around mm -hmm. it, you know, but obviously it's a court now, it's a court of law. And for that, you actually need an attorney, yeah. you know, okay. I as Boni, we cannot represent you there, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. But can you represent at a lower level? At, at, at the Your CCMA, CCMA yes. bargaining council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I can. But then sometimes because also they don't allow legal representation. So sometimes a client has to actually make an application to the CCMA to say, can I bring a labor representative, okay. right? Maybe because of my knowledge of the process or system or because maybe my employer is bringing an experienced person so you can make that application mm -hmm. and then yes if granted then i can represent the person and then so that's the labor court right and then if you find that maybe the labor at the labor court one of the parties feels that they're still not happy and they feel that you know they feel strongly about their case mm -hmm. then they can take it to the uh you know the labor appeal court we also okay. have the labor um in exactly the, labor the, same appeal court. As, the same way as the as normal court, court as a criminal yes, yes yeah. you will actually you will actually have that but but obviously, the starting point of any resolution of a labor dispute would be your CCMA, CCMA. or your bargaining council. You said, uh, uh, you know, CCMA in its Kasetswana is a kilokota. Yeah, yeah. It's a meeting of, of minds. Mm -hmm. Let's show yes. one another this. Mm -hmm. yes. Anything is possible. Anything here. is possible. Uh, do you find that with the uh, trends in South Africa, that there's a level of fairness in that space? It's busy. Yeah. yeah. Do you find, what, what has been your observation about its fairness? <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, there is a high level of fairness, mm -hmm. but I will not take away from the fact that you do hear people saying, I don't trust the CCMA. Uh, I think these commissioners are bored. I think these commissioners, you know, cannot be trusted, They're you know, and all of those or whatever. Yeah. So they actually say that. And... Oftentimes, because I haven't experienced it personally, I would not really, you maybe mm. not entertain or support that notion because obviously there's, you know, there's rules, you know, there's oaths and all of those that, you know, and that they abide by. Mm. So I wouldn't trust that. But somebody recently said everybody has a price. So we don't know. We're human <laughs> beings, you know. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I think there's a level of fairness. And what commissioners are trying to do, they're trying to resolve these disputes as they possibly can because we're trying to avoid mm. matters going, coming back, go, coming back or going or to a higher court. Going to a higher so, court, guys. Yeah. Certain things, they can be resolved here. And said, Hansa said it's a, it's a commission for conciliation, mm -hmm. mediation and arbitration. Yeah. So what often happens, you'd find there's a process called like conciliation and there's a process called arbitration. Oh, and oftentimes you find that there's there could also be a session called the CONAB. Mm -hmm. So what the CONAB means that... Um, you will start with a conciliation and if conciliation fails, you move into arbitration immediately. Mm -hmm. Same okay. day, same time, okay. you know, all of those, like yeah. one follows the other. Yeah. But, you know, 
you'd find that you find employers that would actually oppose that because they would actually want to start with conciliation first. Mm -hmm. And then if conciliation then fails, then everybody can go back and then there could be a new date for arbitration to give parties enough time to to prepare. To prepare. Yeah. But the first starting point of a resolution of any matter at the CCMA or at the bargaining council is conciliation. Mm -hmm. And conciliation, to your point, is the meeting of the minds, right, guys? How can we resolve this, yes. you know? Um, how can we resolve this? So what do you want? What did you do? Mm. What did you not do? You know, and the commissioner will actually talk to us together or sometimes feel, you know what, there's something that David is not disclosing. Uh, employer, go outside, let me talk to David. David, so tell me actually what's happening. So you it's know? not a hostile No, it's not a hostile. So what's happening? And David yeah. will say, you know, these people have been doing this for whatever and this commissioner and this commissioner and this commissioner, mm. you know? And then maybe the commissioner says, okay, David, maybe step outside. Employer, let me talk to, them. Let me talk to employer. Employer, yeah. come in. Employer, what's happening? Commissioner, oh, actually, should be actually, we should end this thing here because what what he doesn't know mm. is that there's an investigation pending. Jo, jo, jo. So when he goes back, commissioner, <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. K, a case, case, yeah, <laughs> misrepresentation or dishonesty yes. or whatever, and the charges, you know, or whatever. They're gonna, he's mm. gonna get dismissed, yeah. you know, commissioner. And that's why I actually wanted us to actually conciliate this or okay. whatever. Or probably, uh, you know, commissioner, maybe I might have, we might have been wrong as an employer. We might have, over, you know, uh, overlooked certain things mm. or applied certain processes correctly, you know. But obviously, the employer will not say that in front of, of you, course, you of know. Course. So, they'd what, rather say it to the commissioner, you know. But yeah. what they're trying to do at the conciliation stage, guys, let's find a resolution to this dispute, yeah. right? And remember, with, with conciliation, uh, it's not the, the outcome come of thereof are not binding right so if anyone is not happy then obviously do not go to arbitration True. so when we get to arbitration obviously then the you know you need to litigate mm. right and with the arbitration is that uh the 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 award or the findings of the arbit of the uh, of the arbitrator it's they're actually final it's binding and final so the arbitration now changes tone <laughs> it it's changes no, it's tone no, it's no longer that meeting of ah, minds. no no there's no meeting of minds here there's no entertaining go out and come back in no yeah, let's they, talk no it's a it's a proper, it's so a proper it's almost, sitting. almost legal session yes, yes. in and its nature. Hence I said, it, it's actually the outcome of the of the arbitration or of the commissioner in the arbitration, they are final and binding, yeah. right? So for example, if the commissioner rules that um, you they need to re-employ you mm -hmm. or reinstate you, right? That's fine. That's fine. That's the, the, they have to figure it out. No, they have to re-employ you. Yeah, that's it. That's it because it's binding and it's final, yeah. right? Uh, and then you become happy then you go back to work life continues right it, what Unless, happens after that it's another story it's another story yes, how but, you guys yeah. but the, this is final and I cannot go back and show up on the date that we agreed and as my employer say no go back yes hey, oh, my how? office is locked no you can't my card doesn't work <laughs> you can't unless maybe they say maybe we're going to move you to a different department different yes. line manager they can make whatever but when you're going back there yes and then um Unless maybe then the employer feels strongly about this case and they think, you know what? Not at all. Let's take the matter to review to the high court. Are there delays, tactics that you may have observed where we just don't want him back? And I'll use Busisiwem Kaban as an example. Hey. <laughs> now she even has legal fees, but she doesn't have lawyers. So it's that kind of thing mm. where where it just drags and so drags. It drags, right? It drags. Uh, I've seen cases dragging for various reasons or from different parties. Mm. Uh, sometimes you'd find it can drag from an employee's side because they're trying to make a plan. Okay. How can I get myself out of this? Or maybe you've been going to interviews, you're hoping that something can quickly land so that you can oh, resign. Okay. Or but sometimes you might use a tactic of saying, I'm not well, I'm sick. Mm. And then your doctor books you off for three days. Yeah. And then you come back and you're still not fit enough. Or you go for um, you know, either for therapy or counseling or whatever. Yes. And then they say that you're not fit enough to stand this process, you know, so that your employer must give you two or three months mm. before, you know, mm. and that delays the process. And you maybe you for might whatever be whatever tactics, or maybe you might be sick. Maybe you might be sick. And I don't also want to say it's a tactic because yes. people can genuinely be medically unfit. Because yeah. sometimes maybe, depending on the severity of the of the case, it might be sh a shocker to your system. That's true. It might be. So hence I say we can't say it's a tactic. But mm. we have seen that at play. Or you might find that in certain times there's a disciplinary hearing scheduled for today. You don't pitch as the employee. Mm. Yes, as the employee. You don't pitch. 
you know, uh, <laughs> so what happens? Do that. Yeah, people don't pitch. You don't just, and in you not pitching, you're not saying anything to anyone. You're not calling in sick. Nothing. You're not saying I'm delayed. You're not saying I'm stuck in traffic. You, you, people just don't pitch. And sometimes a reasonable um, chairperson can say, you know what? Uh, yeah. Maybe let's find out what happened. Maybe let's yeah. reschedule for an answer. Let's not uh, be harsh. You know, in, let's not be yeah, harsh, right? Yeah. But not taking away from the fact that um, sometimes a disciplinary hearing can continue in absentia. So that also does happen. So don't automatically assume that by you not showing up, it mm. will not happen. It can continue, especially where you find that the employer has given you sufficient notice to attend. Yeah. They've given you probably sometimes even a week or two weeks, right, mm. to prepare, to find a representative and all of those things. You still don't show up. And then on that day, you don't say anything. So a chairperson can ask, when was this person notified? Mm. Was this person even at work yesterday? Yes. Uh, so why is the person not here? No, we don't know. Are they at work? Are, no. You know, they're not at work so... and whatever, you know. And the, and the chairperson can say, no, this person had actually sufficient time to prepare. And this uh, hearing is was actually maybe scheduled to sit at 11 o'clock, you know. Mm. So so from 8 up until 11, which could have been your normal working hours, you could have actually then you're reported not work, why you're not, not at here. work. <laughs> so there's another thing. It's absent without permission. Absent without permission. <laughs> because now we don't know where you are because you're supposed to be at work for this hearing or, or at forever. Least at the hearing. You know, and you're not. So why are you absent? You don't even have leave. So you can actually then uh you know, see such tactics, especially from the from the employee side, yes. right? I think with the employer. They would actually want to get it over and done with, right? Because often they actually have their ducks in a row. By the time they issue you with charges... They they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They've secured the chairperson. They've secured witnesses. They've uh, prepared their evidence bundles, you know, secured a room, all mm. of those things. So by the time that they get to you, they have done mm. whatever that needed mm. to be done. So you would actually then hardly ever find that the delay from their side could actually be maybe when a certain weakness is not present, you know, mm. or maybe somebody is uh, testifying virtually and maybe there's power issues, there's okay. connectivity it's issues. It's more technical it could be It yeah. could be, it could be um, you know, it could, it could be technical. Where they become unfair is when somebody, maybe we haven't gotten to the disciplinary hearing stage, but somebody has been suspended and the suspension has taken too long. Mm. So that can actually also what be unfair. What do you mean by that? It's still at, it's not at CCMA yet. No, no. It's still an internal matter. It's an, it's an internal matter. Maybe yeah. they're investigating you and as okay. part of the investigation, then they suspend you Your as whole. a precaution, yes. right? So you say, you know what? Uh, we are actually suspending you for this particular, you know, alleged matter. Mm -hmm. And because of the seriousness of the, of the matter or the nature of the matter, we can't afford to have you continue to work. Yeah. Or such, we are suspending you. And you find that six months go by. Yo. Time goes by, you know. As much as you are still getting paid, but it's frustrating. I was about to ask, or is, it, is it suspension with leave or suspension without? Sometimes no, we don't even no, know. It's, no, you can't suspend an employee without payment. Without payment. Okay. That you can't do oh, at all. Is that, that's illegal. No, but you're an employee. Why are you not paying uh, me? Uh, that's true. All right, you're an so employee. So the fact that you're suspending me is your problem. It's your problem, right? Yeah. So you need to expedite your process mm. so that you don't have to pay me for long unnecessarily so. Yeah. Um, unless maybe then the suspension without pay becomes um, an alternative to a dismissal. Mm. Maybe, for example, then you were suspended and then you come to work and then they take you through a disciplinary hearing and then instead of dismissing you, because sometimes you're always, you're always looking for other options short of dismissal to say, yeah. you know what, we'll give you a final written warning, but actually that suspension we were going to convert it to... Um, and paid suspension. We're not going to pay you for that, but you actually have your job. But that it, can happen. That can happen instead of them dismissing you sometimes if they want to be lenient, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hore, I said, Hore Ruku. Mara. Yeah. Ritia. And we're giving you final written I warning. You, you know, 100%. we're looking for options that are, you know, short of dismissal. Mm. But if you are still suspended at home for whatever period and maybe the matter has not set, has not been heard, yeah. the employer cannot not pay you. I'm an employee. You can stop my payment once you've dismissed me. Well, once I'm not employed. I'm by not you. employed. But by suspension, I'm your employee. So I still need to get my full salary and my full benefits. Life continues. When you finalize your investigation and take me into a hearing and then I'm dismissed, then you can stop my salary from the day that you are dismissing me. It looks like um, a paid holiday. 
But you said immediately <laughs> that it's quite frustrating. No, it's frustrating because you don't know. You're dealing with uncertainty. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. You're waking up every morning. You're not going anywhere. Yo. You're not going to work. And sometimes, remember, when they suspend you, they can take your laptop and they can take your company cell phone. Take a company car if you use a company car. If your company car. car. Yes. They can tell you not to make contact with certain customers. They can tell you to not make contact with your team members. With colleagues. You know, at, during that time of the investigation because you might jeopardize the, mm. uh, you know, the investigation. Unless maybe you need to make contact with those people because you feel that they are important in terms of building your own case. Right? So it's frustrating. You wake up in the morning and you say, you go away. How do you explain yourself to your kids? Daddy, why are you home every day? Mm. Daddy, you haven't traveled for work this week, you know, and all of those things. Mm. And you don't know, should I be looking for, a, should I for, another, job? for another job or not? So it emotionally, psychologically, and even physically, it does impact yeah. you. So it's not, it might sound like a nice holiday. But it's not nice at all. Unless maybe you know you're guilty and you're just waiting for it to happen. <laughs> but I, I t trust me, I've seen a lot of people and it's not a happy place. Yeah. Mm. You know, I know someone that got suspended and the investigation, the case took forever. Mm. So so cases do take long sometimes. No, yeah. Because it, it was a good year. And well, COVID, mm. co COVID also affected all of yeah. that. But it does happen that it takes mm. a long, long time. It does. For whatever reason. Sometimes it also depends on the complexity of the case. Yeah. Right? Um, an issue of absence without pay or absconsion, you know, sometimes maybe dishonesty. Mm. They might not really. Proving it is not. That easy. No, those ones are kind of like fairly easy. Okay. Uh, but there are those ones that are very deep. You know, yeah. for let's say, for example, a case of sexual harassment, mm. right? Um, how do you prove it? Yes. What evidence are you going to lead? Who when, saw when, you? When, when this person just said you look nice. Yes, you know. And, and, and it, some would yeah. say, but, but whatever. Or I win. Area yeah. Of Sexual you know, uh, or I winked at you, or maybe you were wearing a lacy top and I was staring at your boobs. You know, oh so those 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 cases sometimes can be very complex yeah. in terms of having to gather evidence. You know, having to prove the time and the place they took. You know, they took place. Um, you know, how did you decide that it was sexual harassment? Did you even let the person know that you didn't want them to look mm. at you like that? And Is that how, how severe? it's supposed to be done? Yes, yes, yes. So, for example. I need to tell you that I, I don't want you to hug me. I'm not a hugger. Yes. So you can hug everyone else, but you don't have to because I'm not comfortable. Okay. Or maybe you can say to me, you can wink at me, you know, we're sitting in a meeting across the table and I can actually say after, you know what, I saw you winked and maybe, it, but, but I don't really appreciate it. So please mm. uh, stop doing mm -hmm. it. Right. But if you persist on doing it, it changes, it, it, it changes the, the yeah. tone. But now Kona, it doesn't take away from the fact that if it happens once off, it's not it. You know, it's not it because when trying to also be fair as an employer and trying to resolve this matter and trying to address it, you will actually also, it happened. Okay. Did you let them know? Did they mm. know? Because maybe now we try to actually uh, get you into a, a mediation for kind mm -hmm. of a conversation. Mm -hmm. And David says, ah, no, I was not away. Uh, I, I, I honestly didn't know Bonnie anyway, that you don't like it, but uh, me winking at you. But now that I'm away, I will respect your boundaries and I will not. Yeah. And in that case, you might find that the employer might not pursue. And they can ask you as the employee, are you satisfied? Do you want to pursue this further? Or, yes. Or are you satisfied with the apology now that David knows that he can't, right? And if I am satisfied and I'm comfortable, then we can probably, you know, uh, mm. end there. But sometimes there's other severe forms of, you know, of harassment, you mm. know, uh, kissing, you know, uh, sexual assault, and you know, and slapping all, on the bum yes, during a, 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 a company excursion. And you know, you're thinking it. Ah, we were you know, drunk. And guess what? We were at work. It was a company. It was a. It was yeah, a, company a company event. event. So whether it was outside, it was wherever. It was it late was one at night. In the morning. But it was under the banner of you know an employee, an employer event, and it's as such that remains. Yeah, yeah. it's a because because clearly there's a gravity issue as well. Of course, oh, Jorge, I winked. Yeah. Versus I slept in in the bar. Mm. The gravity is different. It's different, yeah. right? It's and it different. can't be treated the same way. It can't well. be treated the same way. But hence I said, obviously, 
uh, before even charges are issued and stuff like that, the employer will also give you an opportunity to say you are aware that there's these allegations that have been made towards you. Yeah. Do you want to write a statement? Do you want to provide you 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 know your side of the your side of the story? And maybe someone can say, yeah, he has done he has done it to me once. He's winked at me once, or you know, slept me in in my bum mm. once, but. You know what? I actually want to take this seriously because I've seen it, I've seen him doing it to other people as well. Okay. It was not the first time, or I've seen him doing it to someone else, and how it actually continue on when that person stopped and how you know they were hostile and mm, it started re- mm. you know uh, resulting into you know um, you know, a victimization yes. and all of those things. Yes. So there's a lot of things that one needs to consider, and like I said, such cases tend to become very complex. complex. It ends up being your word against mine. Because it could easily be false accusation as well, you where know? I I want something, I want to mm. reduce your position, mm. and I'm trying to create a story that doesn't exist. Mm. That can also be a... Yes, it can. Or sometimes we've seen where people have actually maybe been in a relationship and the relationship came to an end and one party was not happy, mm. you know, with those Ooh. things. And one thing about sexual harassment, now that we've delved into it, uh, it's also to also know that it doesn't only happen towards women, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because we can have this conversation and someone says, but why do you assume it's women or why do you uh, assume it was actually a, somebody a lady? Will, to this point, yeah. somebody will, because we've all, we used a he, <laughs> he and a she, and a she in right? That context, in that context. Yeah. And we say, why would you assume that it was the lady that was dumped harassed, yes. and then harassed, you know. So it also happened to males. I have seen it happen to males. Yeah. Males have came forth. However, the reason most of the time it's a he slash she kind of conversation is because you actually find a lot of women coming forth mm. as opposed mm. to, oh. to males. Okay. And that's why oftentimes you'd find it's actually female victims yeah. because they would actually then report the matter whilst male will you know shrug it off leave it be yeah. traumatized by it i must admit i've I've had an incident in my life uh, yeah one i don't wish to remember it was not pleasant mm. uh, and it, at the at, in that moment it didn't seem like a big deal mm-hmm. it's only after when i was reflecting mm-hmm. that that was not nice mm. <laughs> you know mm. and and you think about it much later and you feel violated mm. you know but that that th- there was a boundary that yeah, was jumped that was there jumped, yes. yeah. and you feel mm. uneasy about mm. it so uh, so that's why i say for for the experience for from a male point of view it's slightly different it's not yeah. immediate it's at not least immediate. for me it wasn't yeah, yeah. and i thought I, I only reflected much much later mm. and i remember thinking Hmm, that was wrong. <laughs> right? Yes. So it, it really does happen to males as well. It's just that the rate of, of reporting it is not as high as it would be with females. With females. Sure. Well, we would, I guess, in this conversation, say men, men should report it just as much. Please, guys. Please. You know? Because there's, there's a lot of factors that play into that space mm-hmm. where what will they say? You know? That also plays it does, a role. The, it's the ego thing. Yes. You're a man, like, you wow. didn't like it when she touched you. You like, know what I mean? Why? You didn't like when she, when he. Yeah. When oh, you know hit? how beautiful that girl is. Come on, man. You know, like there would be such things as well, which yeah. we shouldn't really condone. But yeah. But but they happen, and people would say, ah, bad. Exactly. Okay. And you don't want that, right? No, 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 no. We don't. What What other issues? One other issue that I wanted to talk about is, mm-hmm. and I highlighted it earlier. I don't know. Mm. Pregnancy. Mm-hmm. You, you've been pregnant. Hmm. And now you give birth off for a while. What is the recommended period? It's four months. It's four months. Paid or not? Depends on the employer. So the legislation doesn't really stipulate whether you should be paid or not. Mm. But if you are paid and your company uh, is also contributing, which they should legally do, to the UIF, then you can actually claim from the UIF if it's unpaid. If it's unpaid, you can claim from the UIF during that four months. During that four months, yes. Ah, yeah, but okay. it's the minimum. It's um, it's four months, and hence, no employer can ask you to come back earlier mm. than the four months, right? Um, paid or not paid unless you as an employee you feel that you know what maybe i just got this job or whatever i can't be without 
an income for that long mm -hmm. and then you want to cut it shorter to maybe probably two months or three months. But even if you do that, you need to actually do it in writing so that the employer can also rightfully so protect themselves mm. because they don't want to find in a situation whereby uh, it seems as if they have brought you earlier against your will. They violate it. You know, only, yeah, whilst you are the one that requested for it. But even with that, what legislation says is that irrespective of an employee wanting to come back early, they can't come back earlier than six weeks. Okay. For example, you okay. can't say I'm gonna I'm gonna give birth and stay home for a month and come back. No. Oh. You can't come back earlier than six weeks. After anything after six weeks, if you decide it's you can you may be at, at discretion. At your own discretion, yeah. but it cannot be sooner earlier than that. And even that's even if you want to come back earlier. You need to, you know, put that in writing to your employer mm -hmm. to say that I'm giving birth, whatever. I want to take this period. Maybe I want to make it eight weeks or 12 weeks or whatever. Put it in writing so that, you mm -hmm. know, the, the employer can also um, protect themselves so that they don't get into a situation whereby you're like, no, they brought me back earlier. They didn't give me four months. Mm -hmm. But actually you asked for it as well. But legally... It should be four months. But equally applies for the employer asking mm -hmm. you to come back early after after six weeks. Yo. Where they say, look, we need you. I don't you. think employers should try, should find themselves there though. We sit down. We are adults. We say, are you able to? Because we need you. <laughs> so you're discouraging it completely. I am, guys. I am. Tell you know? me why. Because we need your skills. We're desperate for, for what you're able to do. And it's past the six weeks. Are you able to come to work? Yeah. I, I discourage that very much because um, why? Okay, you, you've, expl you've actually yeah. explained the why part. And we are but you have known about my pregnancy, depending also when I actually informed you, you mm. know, which is another conversation on its own. Uh, but obviously when I inform you, it also gives you an opportunity to, you know, to make alternative arrangements for business continuity. True. You know, to say, uh, are we going to get a temp? Is, are we going to, you know, split the work amongst, you know, the team? Mm. And probably it might be at that critical time of that, you know, yeah. massive project, True. maybe to your True. to your point, right? They can, you, but you have to agree to it. There must be... There must be consent. The same way. Uh, same there way. must be consent, must be written down. Yeah. This was not forced. Mm. This was you agreed. You know, it was agreed. You need to agree to it. Yeah. But, you know... Yeah, from, from an employer perspective, I'd say rather not. Leave it. Leave it. Let's I, not muddy the water. Yes. And then yeah. I come back after four months. I've been replaced. Sure. Uh, hey, business had to continue, as you said. And mm -hmm. uh, now I find myself struggling to work myself back into the system. Because mm -hmm. that happens. Like, it does. We hired another person. Have mm -hmm. you come across a situation where they just don't need me anymore? I haven't, but I've read a, I've read a number of cases, like case laws mm. um, to that effect. But that cannot happen, number one. Okay. Legally, it can't. Remember, when you are employed, so there's an employment contract, whether it's a hard copy or whatever, whether it's tested or whatever. Mm. So you are mm -hmm. in this employment relationship. Yeah. And you are off work for four months because you're on maternity leave, which you are really entitled to sure. as per the legislation, right? Um, so you can't dismiss me without having a conversation with me around my dismissal. True. So you are discriminating against me because of my pregnancy. pregnancy. Yeah. And which is what uh, the Employment Equity Act, you know, uh, protects employees, mm. you know, mm. uh, when mm. it comes to such. So you can't. So if I come back from my maternity leave, I need to have my job waiting for me mm. the same way that I left my job unless then maybe I come back and I am not fit enough to continue in that mm. uh, you know past form and then the employer might need to make reasonable accommodation for me for a certain period of time up until I'm fit to to resume okay. my to okay. resume my job so if you go on maternity leave and come back and 
your job is not there mm. or they've dis- it's, it's an un- first of all it, it will be an automatic it will be an automatic unfair dismissal number yeah. one number two or it will also be an unfair labor practice and you can actually take that to the CCMA remember you are also and you can you cannot also even change someone's job completely because mm. now you're changing the terms and conditions of employment of, of the agreement of the agreement yeah. and you cannot change anyone's terms and conditions of employment without a consultation mm. so that is very important so at what point did you consult with me right yeah. and what are the reasons of you terminating me because remember you can only terminate under three circumstances circumstances misconduct mm-hmm. you've broken a rule incapacity you ill or you are you are a poor performer mm-hmm. three operational requirements which we talk about retrenchments mm-hmm. and if it's a retrenchment you need to have informed me of your intention you needed to have actually consulted with me so that we can actually find a consensus and a meaningful agreement we should have actually discussed the options you know mm. uh, that could be put in place so so that we can actually minimize or avoid uh, the dismissal and if it's not any of these three and by virtue of me not having my job because i went I away for pregnant. four months yes. no there was a recent case last year i just can't remember the names to that case i think it went as far as the as the high court this girl was paid i'm sure it was over a million uh. because that's what happened so she was treated unfairly the employer wanted her to work for long even when she was at a hospital bed at some point because they might have had a difficult pregnancy and then there was a point where she had to open her laptop while she was actually in hospital oh, oh, oh. and then uh, the employer was like why did you get pregnant you know why did you whatever and all of those things like you don't ask such questions <laughs> and then <laughs> what happened was that this person came back and they told them that they don't have their job their job is redundant they don't need that role anymore Whoa. without even consultations or anything else and i think the case was last year it's actually fairly new mm. um and so you don't have a job you've been retrenched the role doesn't exist anymore you can't retrench me you haven't consulted with me and obviously the the lady took the matter on yeah. and i think obviously with investigation and everything else this lady found out that uh, from the colleagues of course to say no 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 your job still exists yes somebody David, else is some, doing it and exactly in that form and shape yeah. so it was uh, you have discriminated against me because i was pregnant yeah. but legislation allows me to take time off to give birth spend time with my baby heal my body and then come back and resume work so you can't <laughs> if your employer says you don't come back because you are you have been on maternity leave because you are pregnant or anything changes unless maybe like i said during your pregnancy or after your pregnancy you can't continue in the previous form or shape you're no longer the same you're no longer the person. same you're because not able of health, to work because of health way. issues exactly. then in that we're also looking at incapacity mm. but even with incapacity uh, there's also a process and you also have to provide for reasonable accommodation as an employer mm. for a certain period of time up until a person can go back to where they were and if nothing changes then you can permanently move them somewhere but also through a process mm, you and can't just decide you can't just decide and if you find that there is no way that you can accommodate this person the nature of the work you know the skill and everything else then you will terminate due to incapacity for ill health yeah. but it's a process i fall pregnant i come back i'm working everything is normal i have a few needs that i didn't have before i need to express i need For to sure. is it called express Yeah uh, to express exactly yeah. I need to express I need a room mm. I need a space to in which sure. to work in essence I'm asking for the rights that I I think I have mm-hmm. do I have those rights or tr- no. I should solve this thing myself Not a lot of employers have those but you know a lot of very progressive employers they have those uh, yeah. those rooms they I forgot what they call them but you can go into that room express your milk mm. keep it in the refrigerator and then go back and continue working and then when you leave after work then you can take your milk and then take yeah. it home there are those that actually provide for that but not every employer really and and those who don't are not necessarily in the wrong they're not really necessarily in the wrong to the best of my knowledge at this stage no yeah. they are, they are, they're actually uh, you know you know not So, I'm advocating yeah. for expressing. We those. all want that. We yeah. all want uh for 
employers to have that so that they can make the transition of women back into the workplace very smooth mm -hmm. and they can be integrated very well and so that um, so that uh, female employees can actually continue you know having to to perform and to deliver because apparently they do get uncomfortable right your breast gets full it gets painful yeah. and you know you you become irritable and all of those things so as part of you know your wellness offering as part of your you know uh, you know culture and accommodating people in different needs Needs, you know, people need to actually consider that. But at the moment, it's not. It, it's not in. It's not a law. It's not a whatever. But it, it, it's what progressive employers have, and they afford their employees because they understand mm. the importance of have not having to discriminate against women. Because the one person that actually gets to face such challenges during the process, it's the person that has given birth, That's right? It, yeah. Even though they were both parents but, but it's, it's, i'm the it's one the mother. That, so yeah, yeah. We, we have seen employers there's a lot in south africa you know that i have actually progressed more, progressed yeah. to that point you know as part of their retaining mothers program and i speak to about women issues because mm -hmm. they they're different to to, mm -hmm. to men time of the month i'm moody i'm sick i'm ill mm -hmm. is that days off is that is it recognized? Why we not only global? So look, who look what? That's easy. I I think to the future. So to the future, right? You may be working a minister of labor. What you know? So there's companies that actually do that. I know. I'm sure you would have seen an article a few months ago around Unilever doing that. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, when like I think there are maternity leaves, and they also give um when you're on your periods, do they call it menstrual leave or something? So they allow I think a day or two. To, to a certain extent uh, for, for women to take time off because obviously women also react differently to, to such it. things, yeah. right? But in South Africa at the moment, it's not a provision. So we don't have that um, within our you know, basic conditions of employment mm. uh, provision. So if there are companies that are doing it, they are doing it because they are advanced or maybe because they are a global company locally, mm. uh, they do that. But it's something that we have had, you know, um, activists and, you know, all of these groups that are advocating for us to actually start having um, those conversations because yeah. they say it's actually not um, it's not actually easy for women when it's that time of, of, of the, the month. month. Yeah. We have females that actually even have period pains that are severe mm. that they can't even just sit down and work and focus and you don't really concentrate, right? Because no. your you body be is going through pain you know, your body's going through a cycle and everything else and somebody's expecting you to reach targets, you know, to deliver, to go present, to actually mm. travel. So we're not there yet as a country, but I'm sure we will actually get there. There has been some strides that are that have been made by the legislations by other you know organizations but we're not there yet uh yeah you say it's global so there are countries clearly that are playing in that space yeah yeah yeah, yeah there yeah, are the countries that are saying this is we're going to provide for this yeah there are countries that do like yeah. when i said uh yeah like when i spoke about unilever earlier you know uh, i think other there are certain companies that i know of in sweden that actually you know provide uh, you know, for for that. But you find obviously a lot of European countries and American mm. countries that have actually advanced and you know we are, you know, lagging behind this it's still quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, people, I think there was an article or somebody that wrote a, a piece on it, you know, to say actually how are we going to manage this as a country because there's also an element of trust right um you know how are we going to manage it what kind of a, what kind of leave is this going to be is it going to be I for how do i prove that does this oh. fall under special leave does it fall under sick leave and does this mean that every time that you go on your periods you what kind of evidence do you give oh. or do we provide that based on your cycle is your cycle then maybe also incorporated oh. in, you know so there's a whole lot that cycles uh, change as well cycle we change do we, Do we have a, a cycle manager? You know, <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's too much work. Somebody has right? to police so it. So there's a lot that needs to take into account. But obviously, there's, there will always be learnings from those that have actually implemented it. You know, in those in those works, yes. first world countries. So yeah, but we're not there yet as a country. Wow, uh, how, where are we with smoke breaks as a country? Sure. <laughs> Where are we? I think it's something that I've never really applied my mind to it. But is it? But, does it um, ever come up as a as a as a problem? Cause, cause I, and I, let me ask, let me, maybe let me, let me help your, 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 your thinking. Mm. I don't smoke, never smoked. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me, mm -hmm. but it seems like those who smoke. Yeah. They do it a lot. They do. And I think when you were asking that question, I'm trying to think, you know, 
I can't really say I have encountered like issues there, but one thing about it, obviously people like you who mm. don't smoke would actually also get to complain to say, hi, bo, you actually go out 10 times in a day to smoke mm. and you for you to go smoke, it's a 15 minute break because well, what happens much. with all the health and safety and the legislations and all of those things, you need to smoke away certain meters away from the office, you mm. know? So you've actually have designated smoking, areas. smoking. So you need to walk to get to, to the designated it's a 15 minute walk or whatever. And back. Uh, 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 maybe 15 minutes we exaggerate well, it now, but maybe I'm, the whole yeah okay, let's just say the whole experience the whole experience is yes, 15 minutes yes, long because you need to walk there and then start. and then you start yeah and oftentimes when you start there's other people and then there's a conversation it's a smoke thing and the smoke thing right yeah. and then you walk back Mm, 15 minutes gone. And then 15 minutes uh, gone. Because I remember, I don't know how many years back, because there was certain, the distance between, you know, the office and the smoking break. And I think in the recent past, the distance has actually then been increased. So you, you, <laughs> the you walk. Area yeah, the smoking areas is, is further, is away. further away. You know, I don't know how far it is right now. Yes. So I think that would be a, such an issue. But I think in my experience, I haven't really had that you know, being brought up as a, as an issue per se yeah. to say, you know what, we have an... But somebody who doesn't smoke, I don't take 10 tea breaks, you know. Be because... Why do you take lunch? Because you're always on a smoking break, but why can't my lunch I was be, about to say, be because long? 15 minutes times 10 times is a lot of time. It's, it's a lot it's of a, time. And you still have, you still have lunch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Something is wrong here. Unfo unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, it happens. You know where it becomes a problem is when your work starts get getting affected by affected your smoking. by your smoking break, and your manager says, "You know what? You're always away. You know, um, from your desk, you don't deliver." And if you someone maybe that works in a claims department, right? They would have the trackers yes. in terms of how long have you logged on for the day, or if you've actually met the targets. And then you'd find that sometimes you might not necessarily be meeting your targets, meeting the targets, or you might actually have to knock off a bit later. Because why? Uh, you have, you have to make up your time. You know, you need to make up the hours in a day. You know, maybe that's why I, I, I spoke about it immediately after we, we spoke about the other leave. Yeah, mm -hmm. women. Because it, it, it's equivalent to take, we even call it a break. It's a smoke break. I'm stopping to yeah. go do something else mm. that is unrelated to my work. Mm -hmm. And others don't do it. But you're seen the same way. Yeah. And maybe they don't do it like you do it. Like I said, somebody might go on a tea break. But we won't be. Of course. <laughs> but, you, but you might go sit and sit there at the pause area, you know, and just take a deep breath. Or sometimes, you know, we, talk, we take, sometimes you need to take, you know, a breathing break. Things might be so intense. Yeah. Um, and you might, you know what, let me just step outside and just walk around the block and then come back in and just gather my thoughts. Yeah. You see, that... And I won't labor this any further. <laughs> I may, I don't need to gather my thoughts ten times a day every day. <laughs> you see the difference. It will and never. I'm not it saying will, it yeah, as a yeah, complaint. Yeah. No, I I'm, hear I'm you. I'm representing those that are just watching it. I know. And they're saying ah, it will just never be equal. It will just, never be the same. I think that's what we need to agree on. It won't be. It won't be. It won't. It won't be. And we can't say if you have smoke breaks, you have to count you. You have to try it. I was out for 15 yeah. minutes and Hence then I we say, add the hours or we take away the no, salary. <laughs> no, I'm sure you will have to make the hours some way, you know. This. Like I said, as I know from uh, with people that work in your, either your call centers, whether it's your claims or whatever, you know, there would be a tracker on your on your machine in terms, in terms of how many hours you need to have logged on mm. on a call uh, or on the PC a day to be able to process a number, um, an, a certain number of, you know, claims and so forth. Yeah. So maybe if you haven't met those hours in a day, you'll actually might have to, to make up for those. It brings us nicely into COVID because COVID has led to working from home. Sure. Working from home. For me, it's a permanent smoke break, but I'm just joking. <laughs> Uh, you I'm know, joking. at home, you don't have to walk 15 minutes. You you, you, you smoke, smoke at, right here at your you desk. You walk out. Yeah. It's right here. Just at the kitchen door. Yeah, but I'm just saying yeah. it, it changed the world of work so mm -hmm. much that the, the tracking your logging hours, it became a thing. Yeah. What has came, come out in terms of trends that you may have observed since the working from home era of work? Yeah. I would say that when, when it started, especially with 2020, because it was forced by the pandemic, yes. uh, one of the findings was that uh, people were actually working long longer hours, hours yes. than when they are in the, in the office. Uh -huh. 
um, whether they wanted to or not, or it was the system that created that, but they did. Yeah. And obviously there was an expectation sometimes from line managers to be always accessible because you're not driving, you're not found yourself into mm -hmm. into into traffic. But also there were certain um research that actually showed that people were even more productive than before mm. because I don't have to wake up at five or four to mm. beat the Joburg peak hour traffic, yeah. you know, and all of those, or sit in traffic for one hour, one 30 hour. minutes yes. to go and whatever. So you spend two to three hours on traffic every day. Yeah. So you actually then get to invest your your three hours into your into your work. Mm. But on the like then but on the other side, especially with the long hours, you know, so somehow it's like it's like the boundaries have fallen off. Mm. You are always accessible. Mm. You must always be, you know, available. I can call you seven at seven in the morning because actually at seven o'clock you should be on the road anyway. Mm, so, so I can actually call you. Even you after know, hours. After hours. Yes. But then we also saw a rise in terms of your, you know, on on your mental health, you know, illnesses. Mm. Right. Uh, we actually saw an increase in that. I think there was a study that was done. I just um I must actually find it here before, uh, that was done that actually then showed uh that you know the usage of as of uh, counseling services actually hmm. increased, wow. right? You're counseling your therapy and and all of those things because people were really not coping, mm. you know, with that working from home. Because remember, this was your home, this was your workspace mm. where your employer your, your, everything. is everything. Yeah. It's homeschooling, yo, right? And all of those <laughs> things. So everything for everybody happens. All in in the in the same space, mm. and we all know that not all our environments, our home settings, are actually conducive for, for such. Yeah. And maybe I might not have house help to actually help with the kids or to help with certain chores. Yeah. So those things are actually also, uh, you know, uh, you know, waiting, you know, waiting for me. But also, when certain companies were actually preparing to go back to work, they actually had surveys or conversations or focus groups mm -hmm. with their people to actually get to understand what would work for you, you know, working from home, working in the office, hybrid. And that's why we have the, the introduction of a hybrid model because sometimes say, you know what, I miss the human interaction. Mm -hmm. I, miss, I miss the tea break. I miss the smoking break, <laughs> yes. you know, by whatever. And then, so they actually found that and that hence you find certain companies are saying that, you know what, we're actually applying a hybrid model, you know, mm. three days in the office, two days, you know, yeah. uh, you know, at home. And so that they could actually allow, you know, human interaction to actually happen with the employees to also enable employee, the employee, you know, engagement and mm. to continue building on the organizational culture because you can build on a culture, but how... It's tricky. It's tricky home. when it's virtual. Yeah. You know, people were hired during COVID that have never been to the office. You don't, don't even know, know your colleagues. Yes. You know, you haven't seen <laughs> anyone. I remember somebody made a joke to say, you know, guys, you've employed me. You don't know if I'm disabled or not, if I have legs Nothing. or not. I will shock you. You know what I mean? Jeez. So it was all of those things. But I think... Uh, in the past two and a half years or so, there has been a lot of evolution in terms of, you know, the working from home, the hybrid policies being in place. Because remember at that point, some people did not have those policies because mm. working from home was actually quite foreign. You know, you can't work from home. You don't have access to VPN. You can't set, you can't send certain documents yes. if you're not in the office. But policies have, have been put in place, you know. Um, IT has worked so hard to mm. actually enable, you know, accessibility of net networks and you know and and all of those and hence i said in certain instances productivity has uh has has improved, has, has improved you know uh sometimes other people will actually even say that um you know, even their finances have improved because I don't really have to take my child to maybe to aftercare or pay sure. transport. I can drop them off and then pick them up myself. So it has actually have had a lot of dynamics. But I must say the biggest um, negative impact was on people's mental health mm -hmm. and boundaries, uh, you know, being broken and people actually working long hours, which impacted their but, general but, health but are we in a better place now i believe we are in a yeah. in a i believe we are in a better place now but you it can also see that i think we are somehow back to pre covid really? especially if you if you look at traffic in the morning just look at oh, yeah, traffic yeah, in that, the morning yeah. i think for me that is my <laughs> that's your observation I, that's my yeah, observation i'm yeah. like okay guys why so we're back we back you know yeah. drive on on the double decker in the morning mm. past william nicola rivonia road 
go to Cape Town and look at uh, you know um, N1 South going to going to town in Cape Town. Driving driving past the the, the convention center. <laughs> yeah, that backlog. <laughs> yeah, from Century City. <laughs> yes. is, yeah, because everybody in Cape Town is going to is driving into town. Is driving into town. So yeah. for me. On a personal level, that has always been my measure. And even if you are going somewhere after work, you actually need to actually leave slightly earlier mm. because why? Traffic's going to be back. there. So it actually indicates how somehow we are we are back. <laughs> it's just that not all the not employers everyone. are yes. actually also announcing that it's 100% back because others are actually going back to the office full-time. They're not even applying hybrid model, even no. though they applied it for two years. Well, it's life is back to normal, I guess. Eh? So yeah. Wow, I find your field of 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 work very interesting. You learn stuff every day. I you imagine. do. I yeah. actually, to be honest, I learn stuff every day because someone says something and like, okay, I haven't <laughs> dealt with that, but <laughs> let me listen, and then let me read, mm. let me consult a colleague to say, hey, have you dealt with this? Have you found this? What has happened? You yes, know, and all of those. Yes, yes. So for me, I think what excites me the most is the opportunity to find something new to learn because you're dealing with people. People are very dynamic, yeah. you know, so what you might have applied to your situation might be different to mine. So there's always an opportunity to find something new uh, to learn mm. and, you know, educate yourself and educate others in the process as well. So there's never a dull moment. No, it can't be. Uh, next time we talk, and sure. I don't know why we missed it in our first conversation, <laughs> Okay, compensation, All right. Uh, you know, getting paid. Because mm. what's the point of getting a job? And not being paid, right? Yes, you know, getting yeah. paid, getting paid right. And uh, knowing how to negotiate your salary. We'll touch into that. You know, and knowing that, um, not being shy to, to know your value, knowing your value. Asking for your worth. Yes, and knowing it. Because mm. sometimes I just don't know, mm. you know. I investigated, but I'm not quite sure. Or my experience is higher mm. uh, than these guys. You hear people saying... Uh, as I've been here for so long and they earn more than me. Uh, this Ntwanale, mm. three weeks ago and it's already earning more than me. All of mm. those, those, those dynamics. tricky. And I imagine mm. that you probably deal with a lot. Money is at the center of work. Right. How the hell did we miss this conversation? I don't know. Because we're going to make a special time for it because it's so interesting and complex I... that we can't cheat it right now. Wow, man. <laughs> Why did I miss money? <laughs> <laughs> no, money is something else, right? Or maybe it's a, again also not being paid. It's the twenty fifth, hey, bro. There's oh, no that, money yes. in the bank. Oh, that what do I do? That happens. Employer, where's my money? Here's this one I want us to conclude with retrenchment. But this one question: Who do I have a right as a as an employee mm -hmm. to to know why? You are retrenching me. Of course. And let's talk about a, where the the reason that's been out in the public is that the company doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. And because COVID led to a lot of that. Of course. Where companies took advantage of that opportunity that, aye, this is a chance to reduce the number of people. Let's say we are struggling. Mm -hmm. Do I have a right for, for me to force you as an employer to prove that you indeed are struggling? Of course. Yes. You need to provide reasons why you are retrenching and mm. you need to provide proof to that extent, right? Oh. So they have to. So you're not um you're not making money. Why are you not making money? Are we not producing enough? Are we not selling enough? Are our services not needed, you know, anymore? You know, what has happened, you know, maybe, you know, in the past in the past two, three quarters or whenever in the past three years, you know, how have we tracked our finances? Companies also that. companies also report in terms, you know, in terms of their, you know, their financial reporting, in terms of their how they have performed, mm. you know, and all of those things. So you need to actually uh share Ooh. that information to say that this is what the situation is, yeah. you know, and it is for that reason that we're actually having to, you know, to cut ahead. So you need to actually provide that information because yeah, sometimes when there are those issues of retrenchment, there'll always be, uh, you know, trust issues, you mm. know, between uh, between parties. But often, where you find, especially in small organizations, because people don't understand the process and all of those things, people can just short circuit um, 
mm, the process. You know, the process. But employers will not actually. You can't get away with it. Where the where people are unionized? Imagine <laughs> where solidarity and numsa. You yeah. can't. You know, so you literally can't. So yeah, but to your point, on a serious note, yes, people do take advantage of that though during sorry? COVID. We've heard that people. Yes. I can't Proof. confirm yeah. myself or any other, but you've heard people say, "Hi, hey, but you know, uh, apparently they are either they are cutting our hours, or you know, probably they are retrenching and all of those." But what I know from my portfolio, nothing has changed. I've been yeah. doing fairly well, but maybe you've been doing well in your sector or in the market that has been allocated to you, but not the rest of the you know of yes. the organization. But transparency is very um is very important, and yeah. your employer needs to actually actually provide you with proof around uh, what has informed. Formed, uh, this, these retrenchments, the it, whether it's the individual or yeah. whether they're retrenching a group of you, uh, you know, it's all the same. It's all, it's all the same because I, you, you know, we need to be, we need to be honest. We need to have a meaningful conversation. And like I said, you can't retrench someone without actually having a consultation with them. And part of the consultation is where you, as the employer, you are saying, "I have the intention," mm -hmm. because you don't say to someone, "I'm retrenching." That's number one. You don't say that. You yes. say, "I have the intention to." Mm. And the reason we say we're talking about intent is because we are still going to engage in consultations. And that what really means is that um, we having to have an open conversation around these are my reasons mm. and these are my recommendations. But based on what I'm sharing with you, what are your thoughts? Do you have questions? Do you understand? Or what do you think we can do better or differently True. to try to salvage the, the situation? You know the situation, and this is what a consultation is meant to do. Yeah. So hence, I said the employer must come to you with an intent and not with a decision. Only after a consultation or a number of consultations, then they can say, taking into account everything that we have discussed, now we are getting into a point of saying, yeah, we are making that decision. And maybe sometimes the consultation can even help to reduce mm. the impact. You know, of, of the, the job losses. Maybe yes. we we're retrenching 20, but now we're retrenching six. Yeah. You know, yes, it might be said for the six and even for the 20 that went through the process, but at least it has reduced the mm, the impact, the right? Of, of the people. number. Yeah. And that can only come through consultation. That's true. You can't say, I'm starting with 20, I'm ending with six. It, it, that will actually be informed by a consultation. Mm. Sometimes... I've actually personally, especially during the recession, whereby obviously the manufacturing industry was not doing well. Mm. Uh, and the unions and the organization got to a point to say, we don't want to retrench, but we actually started actually working reduced hours. Mm. You know, we started working four days a week instead of five days. Okay. So, and then that meant we actually had to take a 10% um, you know, salary cut. Yeah. And that actually happened up until the, uh, you know, the economy improved. And then eventually at some point, then we were able to go back into, you know, full-time mm. work and actually full-time salaries so you know an employer cannot say i'm not making money and then i'm cutting jobs but we can say you know what actually we let's don't really find a way let's find it. a way let's work three days a week you yeah. know or let's you know alternate we work three days and this next week two days or whatever let's have a reduction in income rather than not having income at all so that is enabled by a a consensus a consensus seeking consultation which yeah. is a conversation between all the impact impacted parties so sometimes if it's not unionized employees will actually have to you know um consult for themselves or they might choose employees to represent them mm -hmm. but obviously in a unionized environment then there will be union representatives that will actually uh, represent their members of course with the mandate from their members as we conclude you sometimes look at yourself in the mirror and tell you I know a lot <laughs> <laughs> like girl is that, that really you <laughs> do you do that <laughs> are you aware of your knowledge? That's why it's called your traditionally. <laughs> traditional are you, are you, are you aware of your, of your skill? Yeah. I think it gets affirmed every time that I have conversations with people or when I get feedback. Then yeah. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, I did that, you know? But do you um, you don't immediately see it because the knowledge is inside of you. Maybe it's modesty. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I am fairly comfortable in my knowledge. I, let me let me put it out there. I'm fairly comfortable in my knowledge, and it's, right? It, it came with and, time. And, well. and it, came with, it came with time. I've also been burned myself i've Ooh. been through all these processes that we've spoken about so a lot of them it's references in it's, your own mind it's references and the beauty of it is that i experienced it while i was in hr yes. myself right <laughs> so i uh, you know you you are here and you are and the thing is happening around you mm. in you all of those oh, things no. so and different organizations have different stories but i think what has helped is actually i have been in the system yeah. you know at different levels of my of my career you've worked for different I've, companies i've worked for different companies you know 
uh, learned different things and you know so yeah. I think it comes with that and just the curiosity as well yeah. you know um, like I said I'm freelancing right now but I find myself sitting at home and just reading a case law do you like this more? I think I do honestly if I'm if I have to be honest with myself yeah I think it's one area of my work that I love, but I haven't really specialized in it. So I, most of my time I spent it as a generalist, okay. which I really appreciate it because mm. then I understand the whole um, value chain. Yeah. But I think I love, you know, uh, the labor relations or the employee relations more. What's next for you when you look at your career? Hmm. That's an interesting question. What did I say to him earlier? I said to him, I think I am I am in transition, right? Do you think you are? I think I am. From what to what? <laughs> uh, I think that's what I'm trying to discover, you okay. know, and that's why I'm doing uh, different things. But if I'm to answer you right now, I'll actually find myself always in the employee relations space. I think okay. uh, I often, I used to say when I was younger, uh, I used to say I have a love-hate relationship with uh you know, labor relations or employee relations because okay. I, I run away, it finds me, it runs away, I find <laughs> it, you know. But I think I become in my element when I actually talk about labor-related issues, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about fairness, you know, around employees because I think that's my one of my key values around fairness, how people are treated. Yeah. So I will still remain doing what I'm doing uh, in terms of having to help people navigate the, you know, the world of work. And I think that's why I find myself sitting with people like you, you know, yes. I'm trying to look for platforms that will actually enable me to okay. share information and educate people, you know, a larger audience, right? I could have had this conversation with you mm. behind closed doors True. But now I know and like a lot of people, of us. <laughs> right? What's the point? What's the point, right? Yeah. But I, I am working towards finding myself in platforms where I can share as much as I can, yeah. I can possibly can and where I can, you know, be that agent of change, yeah. you know, educate and make a difference. But yeah, and also into I'm also into public speaking as well. And I think this, this actually, talk, this is. really talks about it, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure about anything else rather than that to other than to say I'm in a happy space right now in my life. Do you enjoy, I am. Do you enjoy freelancing? I do. I do. If a if a big corporate would offer you something decent. I don't know. You know, I've had this conversation. <laughs> it's been almost I'm going to two years now. Whoa. And I have had calls. Uh, yes. I've had had conversations and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, this is gonna stifle me, right? Um yeah. I love the freedom. Nothing beats the freedom, I must tell you. Yeah. Nothing beats the freedom. Not even the money. Uh, not that I don't like money, but <laughs> you know. But I think what I mean is, for, for now, it actually allows me an opportunity to touch as many people as I potentially can. Yeah. Uh, and in corporate, I'll actually be limited. And I think that's what I didn't like, you know, when I also stepped out, like being caged and being boxed, mm. you know. But now I can spread my wings and do quite a lot of things. I said when I left corporate, I said, I think I'll go back in two to three years it's two years and I'm thinking yeah, well. maybe I'll go back in five years right <laughs> maybe I haven't found anything that's enticing I have had conversations with a few employers I have yeah. had uh, you know calls and potential offers and all of those and I'm thinking can I continue doing what I'm doing while I'm working there. <laughs> while I'm working there <laughs> and if they say yes I'm like yes if they say uh, no I'm like ah maybe when it's time to say yes call me yeah. you know but I think I really love the space that I'm in right now I'm, I'm very happy I'm very excited I don't regret my decision of finding myself here yeah. and yeah and you get calls like you during know, this very recording you, you got a call <laughs> I someone got a call with a problem someone with a after hours guys right <laughs> I'm um, thinking yo <laughs> and it's a reminder that when I get into my car I need to call them back yes thank you so much thank you for having me thank you so much I, I really that's, appreciate that, that's why it that's why I asked that question do you look at yourself in the mirror and say <laughs> I'm hot man you know and blowing my own horn right there you know but yeah I think I've grown in into what I am right now and yeah, yeah. I'm kind of comfortable and content where and I there's am. a lot more coming eh? and you will continue to learn right yeah. right yeah. next time we're talking money next time we're talking money yes it's, please uh, uh, it's Dan Star thank you everybody thank Take you care. for having me oh, thank it's you. been so much fun it was great uh, Uvele Eastern Cape technically <laughs> My blood, my ancestors <laughs> are somewhere at <laughs> So they said. <laughs> yes. Thank you again, man. Thank you. Calibor. I said 45 minutes. I won't tell you how long it took us. King King David Studio Podcast.